A dog guide's understanding about a route must be planned, and it evolves one stage at a time. The handler should be the brains of the guiding team. It doesn't always work out that way, but the dog's main objective is to get you from point to point. You have to be able to give directions that encourage this. Good. So what not? Good. That's it. Good. Good. A dog's instincts, if given the right amount of head and the right amount of confidence from the user, will pick up on all this stuff. There are little things a dog guide must be shown to have success with them making contact, praising the dog for finding it a second time, and rehearsing that step again. Straight, let's go. Good girl, huh? To encourage movement Good. in the proper direction. It's all right. It's all right there, there we go. Thank you. Men and women come up to me and say, how old is your dog? This happens a lot on the train or on the bus when the dog is at rest and they feel like it's an okay time to interact with a dog guide. They're still in harness. They still have animal instincts and folks should respect that. on longer stretches where there's not much going on, it's still important to know where the beginning and the end of the route is. So with the animal on a side journey or on a training trip, we'll do landmarking. We'll come to that point in the route and say, I want you to know this, reward it with verbal rewards or with a snack and say this is where I want you to get to next time. From initial training to the evolving of routes and maps and a general geography of the landscape, dog guiding is almost always point to point. Some crossings are very complex. The Northeast in particular presents some pretty unconventional places where pedestrian traffic should be pretty normal, but isn't. What we have to remember as dog guide users is that somebody's been there before and has looked at this and has put the crossing sequence in some kind of a time frame and order so that getting to that intersection, studying it, understanding what happens there, one can really find a very comfortable and safe way and time to cross with an animal without trouble. A lot of information gets transferred through the handle. Experienced dog guide users will pick up on these things. Dog guiding is a little bit like driving a car at a slower speed. The handler must be aware of the movements of other people and other objects. Be alert as to when to choose to stop and go. Make good decisions about safety. And handle unpredictable situations with care and thoughtfulness. Yes, the unobstructed course, the big wide sidewalk, is very refreshing. But in places like Boston, it doesn't happen that often. So be prepared for moving and stationary objects 
to be not quite where you thought they were the first time. I see all kinds of things happen at intersections. People crossing against the light, people crossing diagonally, bicycles coming at the end of a cycle or at the very beginning at top speed. Those are things that you turn over to the dog. If the dog's not ready to move, you have to be willing to listen to that, understand why it's happening, and give yourself plenty of time to do the right thing. Even though I protect my dogs from a lot of handling, a lot of interaction, it's okay for them to have friends. It's a good thing. It normalizes their life. Hey, Phil, come on over here. It gives them an opportunity for relaxation and enjoyment, and it helps them feel like they've not only reached a destination, but they've found a friend there that they can relax and enjoy with.